right, uh, let's get into some uh, background painting. I'm going to give you a rundown of, uh, of what I've got here. I've got a little Folgers can full of water so I can wash the brush out with. And uh, I keep a rag, so after you rinse the brush out, you can just dry it off on the rag real quick. That's what you have. I'll be using uh, pool blue premix colors for this. Pool blue, uh, antique white, and uh, mango. Antique white will be the cloud color, and I'll line the clouds with the mango color. It's a nice effect over the blue, because the yellow starts to show out really good in the antique white. And I'll be using the Lowell Corning wash brush, and just a smaller brush for the, for the tighter spots. And I'll mix the paint in this little solo cup here. And I uh, also like to keep my, my bottle of water. It's a Coke bottle with a hole drill on the top, so you can just add as much water whenever you want. So uh, let's get to it. All right, let's get a little bit of this pool blue in our cup. Now you can uh, just paint it on just like this if you want. You don't have to mix any water, but I like to put a little bit in there. Just a couple of drops. Almost just enough to coat the top of the paint there. Mix it in real good. This will help it stretch further. It's a better viscosity too. It covers a little better, but uh, with this, with these kind of paints I use, you generally have to put on a second coat. Wash it off in the water. There you go. Use the rag. Brush is ready to use already. All right now, I'm just gonna fill in. Get as close to the edge as I can. Don't, don't even worry about going over the pencil line. If you do, it should show through. If it does, you can just mark it again with the pencil for your second cup so it'll show through again. Like right here, you see where that mustache is? I'm just gonna go ahead and go right over it. No big deal. Try to get the paint to lay as flat as possible. Follow down the line. There we go. Now here's where I pull out the smaller brush just to get these tighter spots in between his neck and her hair. I forgot to mention the most important tool just about is uh, having a hair dryer around. That'll save you a lot of trouble. Okay, now I've just, I've used the tighter brush and just gotten into the spots that I know that I can't get the big brush into. And I'm just gonna fill in the rest. Okay. I've got everything hit once. I'm gonna go ahead and if you can see right there in the shot, it looks like it's gonna need another coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and coat it real quick. And then we'll get to the clouds. But I'm not gonna film me coating it again. I don't wanna bore you with that. Okay, I've got the uh, blue done. It's already second coated. It's nicely filled in. Uh, we're gonna get into some clouds here. But uh, there's something else I forgot to mention, which is, uh, when I paint, I, I, I guess it's just the way I learned how to draw. I, I have to have a flat image, or, or that is laying down. Like it's really hard for me to paint like when I'm standing up on a canvas. So if you're more comfortable painting like this, like I am, you have to watch out for pushing down on the canvas because you know the canvas can start to sag. And one thing I came up with is I just took a stack of paper got it to the right height to match with the canvas and just taped it all together. Well, this is falling apart. I've been using this same step for a while, but it just so happens it really it fits in this size canvas really well. But if you're on, if you're using like a 16 by 20 or something like that, you just move it around for where you're working. And that way you won't get those uh, either sagging or where you push against the canvas where the wood is, Behind the canvas, you'll you'll it'll you'll get these creases in it, 
get these to line, so watch out for that. Should have mentioned that earlier. But this is to the right height, and that's it. I just slip it on over there. And now see, now I can put as much pressure as I want on it, and it doesn't uh, affect the canvas. So let's get into those clouds. All right, now let's get into the antique white. A little bit in there. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna thin this out a little bit too. Uh, a little more than I did the background. So it'll, uh, so it'll uh, go into the texture of the canvas, you know, to make a nice clean line. Which the more gesso you put on, the less that'll happen. And I like painting like this uh, in this kind of style because when I do the characters first and then I do the background and I can see what spaces, you know, uh, what areas the, the clouds would look good in. So I'll just maybe go over here first, just do the top of the cloud. And I'll just start filling it in. If you want to do it quicker, you can do two coats on this because you're going to need to because it's a lighter color over a darker. Especially on a tight styles like this. You don't have to, but uh, just bring the line down enough to where you can fit your uh, finger brush in there. Okay, maybe I'll this cloud here. Add up a little bit. Okay, now uh, I'm into the mango and I'm going to go ahead and line the clouds out. I like it pretty thin to where if you dip your brush in it, it's just about to, to drip off, but it doesn't drip off, you know what I mean? Like if you barely shake it, it might drip off. But that works really well for line, line work. Now I could just follow it like this, just follow the line. Right, that's a way to do it. And I think that looks good. But you could also bring some lines down into the clock. That a couple of dots in there. It's a little more detail. And for the bottom, I like to kind of make a shadow, like wave it around a little bit. Yeah. Now this particular color is a little, just a little bit thin. So I'll go ahead and use the hair dryer real quick. And here's just another piece of advice uh, when you're doing cartoony clouds like this, when you follow the line out, hopefully this will show in this camera. When you follow the line out, you can extend it a little further. Extend it just a little further, like that, and just put a couple of dots. Make a trail off. Kind of a nice little effect, I think. But I'm going to go ahead and line all these out. I'm not going to film all of it. And uh, in the next video, we'll get into some character work. I think we'll probably do the octopus next.